Hey traders, <clears throat> this is a uh, video on how to quantify a live trade. Now, this was originally broadcast December 10th in our uh, New York room. Originally, it was a 90-minute recording, uh, but uh, that's too long for anybody. So what I've done is gone through and edited it for clarity. So uh, you'll hear two different uh, voices on that um, because I'm recording on a different date. So just letting you know that. All right, so uh, don't forget trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk may not be suitable for all investors. Before deciding to trade foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. And the possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest any money you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek the advice of an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. So first, <clears throat> we'll assume that you know how to find the wide open spaces in your charts. But if not, we have a live webinar that you can watch on our charts. Let me pull them up here real quick. All right, so right up here, you see where it says free webinar right here. You can uh, just click that, uh, you know, join it, and uh, it'll send you the link from there, okay? So that's the first thing. And uh, so next, you must have a way to ascertain the ATR of the day. So the links are on our website that you can uh, learn how to do that. Uh, let me show you that right here under software. It says ATR. You pull that up, <clears throat> and there are several different ways to get it. Uh, you can get a one on your cell phone to get updates it daily. You get it, uh, you know, you get little ads on there. There's no not a big deal right there. <clears throat> you could also use a daily range cal calculator. I'm not a big fan of that as the ATR, but it would also work for you. And uh, you know there. Are, Tons of scripts out there that you can uh, just download, just Google it. That's all you have to do. All right. And um, you must understand scaling in a live trade. Now, there's also a video to understand this on our website under first videos. So let me pull that up. And under here in education where it says first videos right here, you just scroll down here and it'll be right near the bottom. You must learn to press your winners without exception. Here's a four minute video to understand how to start this technique, okay? So there we go. All right, so the process is very simple. You verify the actual structure on the chart, and that comes from a 240 minute chart, all right? Then you confirm that on a 60 minute chart. So, you know, you could have a 240 minute chart that says you got a trend going down, but when you get on the 60 minute chart, you realize you're in a correction going up. So it's important that you uh, identify what the structure actually is for the day, and then uh, define what the currency has got to do for you to actually push the button, all right? So then we ascertain the reward for the risk and there's a video on our website under first videos who also details that stop process let me pull that up for you so right here it's on the same thing first videos uh, it is uh, uh, excuse me stops are for sissies where are you mr. stop there it is stops are for sissies right there 13 minute video which will de detail how to do a stop methodology uh, using uh, <coughs> wide open spaces all right so there you go all right so that's how we do that, and uh, so I'm just going to pop into this live uh, live room, and uh, you'll be able to uh, see multiple examples uh, of uh, trading opportunities that may or may not have materialized based on that criteria. So join me in that room right now. So let's go take a look and see what we got this morning. Uh, we're going to take a look at the dollar index first, and you see right here where it's made a move back to the upside. Remember. Uh, let me make this candles a little bigger so you can see them. So down to, to here and bounce. So they're just oscillating in here. This is what we call equilibrium right here. Let me change the color of that so you can see it. It was blue and it should be green. Uh, let's see if I can get on it. Uh, on the air. Oh, no, that isn't green. That's just the box that it's trading in. Uh, so let me get rid of that box. There we go. So just oscillating up and down, as you can see, there's equilibrium running right in here. It's going up to it, back down to it, up to it, back down to it, back down to it, back up to it. Next move should be up to it and then back down to it. So be aware of that when they start these oscillating little moves here, they move off of equilibrium and back up to equilibrium, above equilibrium, back down to equilibrium. <clears throat> which means the turn is going to be very quickly. If you've recognized that, you know how to handle your stops pretty quickly. And uh, some of you can actually trade it both ways. All right.
So there you go. So we're going to go with dollar strength right now. Uh, but let's just, before we do that, let's go check and see what MACD says about dollar index. And MACD says you are, uh, you have divergence right now for an up move, as you can see here. So they brought this down like this. So we're actually in convergence to the upside. So we're looking for dollar strength this morning. All right. So that would mean the euro, the pound, the Aussie, the New Zealand to the downside. <clears throat> so euro dollar should go to the downside. And uh, there's a big old red candle right there. And of course, we know right now that they're trying to move it off this 1350, 1340 area right here. <clears throat> so uh, take that off. They're not doing that anymore. It's gone. Okay. And we can actually put the new one on here, which would be across these bottoms right here right there. And we're looking for a move down here. So there's about 50 pips to that day chart bottom. And there's about 70 pips down here to the uh, double bottom over here, right? We've got a 78 pip to ATR, but it's already done 50 pips during the night. There's only 28 pips left. So since there's only 28 pips left, and uh, we have a target that's 60 pips away, can we make this trade this morning? Can we trade the EU this morning? No, we can't do it. No, only Bill can. That's right. <laughs> only Bill can trade it. Exactly correct. <laughs> All righty. All right. So nothing there. And, and what happens to a lot of traders, especially the euro dollar, a lot of retail traders trade it. The reason they trade it because there's only one pip to get in. And because they're used to trading for only five, eight, 10 pips, a one pip spread is really, really important to them. Okay. The unfortunate thing, as I showed you yesterday, if you were in class, was that you have to be 90% correct for the rest of your life if you trade that way, which is not possible unless you are the greatest trader in the planet. All right. So when well, traders try to trade it every day, and there are so many days that you should never trade it. And considering it, it is the, it is the uh, uh, most traded currency in the world, it has a very, very small ATR considering that, right? So, you know, it's crazy. All right, over to pound dollar, okay? Dollar to the upside means pound to the downside. Unfortunately, they're trying to put in a wave up to the top, all right? So let me put it up to the 240 and you can see what I'm talking about, right? So <clears throat> right here, you have a, a one wave, a two wave, a three wave. Next one should be an A, B, C, fourth wave, and then a fifth wave. That's what should happen. All right, <clears throat> so what's the problem? Well, right now, dollar is going up, which means pound should go down and they haven't finished the correction yet, all right? So what that typically will happen when that happens, because the structure is it's structured to do one thing and the dollar index is going against that, the typical thing they do is just sit here and oscillate until the dollar flips the other way. Then they make the move up, finish that, and start the structure all over again. All right. So uh, there's no way we could even trade it if we wanted to until we take this bottom off right here, which is still 60 pips away, and they've done 50 pips. So in order to get in position for the trade, if they want to take it down, it's got a, it's going to move 110 pips of its 107 pip ATR. So do we have a trade on the pound dollar this morning? No, we don't. We don't. We'll have, we'll have eaten up all this ATR. That's so why it's so critical that you use the ATR to, to filter your trades. <clears throat> because if you're not using that piece of information, you're actually trading blind. Uh, you have a piece of vital information that is critical to your ability to find a trade opportunity this morning. And if you're not watching the ATR every day, then you have, you, that piece of information is gone. So it's very important that you know what that is. All right? that's, why we, that's why we post it every day. And in here, we post it every day what the ATR is. You can see it right there, all right? So they, we do get it on Monday, and it does uh, last all week. They do change a little bit each day, one pip or two pips, nothing major. But you can see, if you take a look at across here, or like, for instance, on the euro dollar, and a 14-day average, it does 78 pips. 90-day average is 81 pips, just three pips more. And 180-day average is 82 pips, which is only four pips off of what it's doing right now. So roughly, and that's a half a year worth of data right there, uh, the euro dollar only moves about 80 pips a day, all right? So you can count on that piece of information, all right? So if it only moves 80 pips a day, it's already done 50. There's only 30 pips left, all right? And we got to go 60 pips before we get a trade, see? So that's how we know, all right? 
All right, over to dollar CAD. All right, dollar CAD, dollar going up, which means the dollar should go up. Let's check uh, West Texas Intermediate real quickly and see what it's doing because West Texas Intermediate affects the dollar, uh, the Canadian currencies, and they are driving the currency down to $50.66. Okay, that means a lot, if they break this $50, about 700,000 um, uh, oil workers get laid off. <clears throat> So be aware of that. The, the beauty of having uh, low gas prices is offset by the fact that 700,000, almost a million people, uh, okay, uh, that almost a million people go out of work if they blow, go below $50 a barrel, right? So uh, my opinion is I'd rather pay 10 cents more to, at the uh, pump uh, for those people to work seven or the, to go to state at work, right? <clears throat> so... Okay, so the Canadian part's going down, the dollar part's going up. So the dollar CAD should go to the upside, all right? So it's got an ATR of 101 pips, all right? So during the night, it's done about 40 pips. So it's got 60 pips left, which means this opportunity right here is here. We have a wide open space. We have a place to press our winners, trade one and trade two, the T30 right there. And we have, uh, we have the ATR with us. So press our winners and ATR. Those are the three questions. Those things have to match up in order for our trade to exist. Do we have those things and can we make this trade this morning if it happens? Yes, we can. All right. So that's the criteria. That's how you figure out whether I should look at a currency or not. All right. So see, it's not hard. Traders make trading way too difficult, way, way too difficult. All right. You can also see that if we put a single line trend line across here, that we've had our breakout. All right. So we've got a pretty good chance that are going up. We also could make a case that we're starting, we're trying to do a poll. We got in like this, we're coming out like this. So we're probably at least going to get to the double top here, if not up to 2450. So dollar CAD is on the table. See, that is, don't make it difficult. Yeah, but my moving average crossover didn't cross over yet. Well, it's, that's junk. The market doesn't care about that. It doesn't do that. All right. <clears throat> what happens is there's clever marketing out there that has convinced traders that if you have this indicator or that indicator or this setting on this indicator or that, then it will go. All right. Yeah, it needs to break the fib. So we need to break, cook, and go, Leonard, above there. Right, because this is this is the barrier. You can see that that's the barrier right there. Previous support is now resistance and resistance. So break the barrier, and now we're underway. Trade one, trade two, right there. See, that's it. So it's not rocket science. All right. So dollar CAD is on the table this morning. All right. Over to dollar Swissy. Right? Dollar Swissy, dollar going up. This should go up. And as you can see, we are doing a poll, our flag pattern, I should say, for a poll trade. There's the poll. And they have they broke it once, but we're not successful. All right. This is why you need a break, hook, and go. All right. Because many times you get a break, hook, and no go. And if you make the trade waiting for the and don't wait for the go, you end up getting stopped out down here. And you go, the broker stopped me out again. Nope. The broker didn't stop you out. You didn't wait for the break, hook, and go. <clears throat> they didn't have enough participants to make it go. So they go back down to find the participants. Where are the participants? Professional traders only buy at the bottom. Professional traders never buy at the top, all right? So if you trade this thing, you're buying at the top. That's what uh, dumb money does. So we got we to gotta fight that like crazy because it's real easy for us to get excited when the currency, oh, man, it's taking off. Yeah, but man, it was bright green and had a white dot. That's right. Money. All that means is money came in. Is it enough money to drive it? We don't know. All we know is that money came in. That's it. So they put money in trying to get it going, but they ran, they didn't have any follow through. They need the rest of the traders to recognize it and say, okay, we're in with you. And that takes it where it's supposed to go. See? So it's not hard. Right? So we're looking for this uh, trade here. So we need a break hook and go here. All right? And we got an ATR on the dollar Swissy of only 51 pips. All right. That's all I got. 51 pips. And so they have done about about 30 pips of that already. So there's only 20 pips left, which is most likely what happened over here. 50 pips, they, they did it, that's it. <clears throat>
Uh, well, it depends on, on time of day. It's not just a blanket black and white thing, this. It's time of day will be a factor. When did it happen? Uh, uh, do they have enough right here? And this is, uh, th this is also, I'm glad you brought that up, Buzz, okay? So it is not a, a black and white thing there. You're looking for a break, hook, and go. If you don't get the go, you know you don't have enough participants, okay? But this is why your first trade is one-third of your lots with a stop below the last support, five to seven pips, and then you multiply that times three. So if you took it in here, that's, there it is, there it is, and there it is, all right? So your actual stop would be sitting down here, all right? Which means that you, you'll be able to not get stopped down in here and still be waiting with one position. It will be upside down. And when, that, when it breaks out again the next time, this becomes a chance to put your next one third on stop stays uh, now has to be removed in half because you have two thirds of your lots on. So you go up here like this, put it halfway, all right? Now, if you break this top right here, the last one third goes on for the target, all right? And by the end of that whole trade, if you make, if, it, if the trade works, all right? What you end up getting is you get uh, 60 pips on the first trade, you get uh, 40 pips on the second trade, and you get 25 pips on the third trade. So what do you make? 100 pips on a movement that only goes about 45, 50 pips. See that? On the previous one, the dollar cat, <coughs> it's a break, hook, and go. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how many. There's no such thing as it's 25 pips or, or no, uh, whatever. It's just a break, hook, and go. <coughs> so what you need to do is you go study them, all right? So you go do 100 of them. All right. If you do 100 of them, you're going to find that there are 95 different versions of break, hook, and go. 95 different versions. All right. No, no, very rarely do you see one that looks like the next. All right. <clears throat> so, but you have to train your brain to, to spot them. All right. So the only way to do it is to go do it. All right. So, all right. Over to uh, dollar yen. All right. Dollar yen, all right, dollar to the upside. What have they done during the night? This is uh, one o'clock this morning. So they've done 20 pips, 20 pips of a ATR that is dollar yen. Where are you, dollar yen? Right here, it's 56 pips. It's way, way down, it's ATR. So it only goes 50 pips. It's got, it's already done 20. So when it breaks up here, all you can expect is it for it to go up there, all right? So we have a wide open space. We have a place to press our winners, one and two. But do we have the ATR? No, we don't. The ATR is not here. We don't have it. We already used half of it up. So this becomes a no trade, even though you know where it's going to go. And the temptation for a trader is saying, okay, but I can make 25 pips there. Why don't I just go get the 25 pips? Well, you might be a winner there. You just won the battle. You just lost the war. Now you got to be right 85% for the rest of your life. All right. You see, you just don't want to stack the deck that way. It's about putting the statistical probability in your favor. It's not about trying to grab pips here and there and everywhere, here a pip, there a pip everywhere a pip pip old mcdonald had a farm you know it's not about that it's about it's about creating a, a strategy and a plan for this currency that meets the criteria that allows you to make lots of pips on every winning trade that you have <clears throat> so that's how you do it right, so you pass on these marginal trades even though they may break hook and go and go and you go i know it's going up there i could grab those 20 pips while well, you do that and what has happened you, you now you now have uh, created a bad habit. Most traders teach themselves to trade bad. That's what they do, all right? Because they get they lose sight of what they're trying to do. All right. So we have a break here. All right. If we get a hook and a go, do we want the trade? We don't want the trade. See, we pass on that trade. It's not a high probability. You're looking for high probability, low reward. High probability, low reward. We're not looking for low reward, high probability, or low pro a high a low reward with a, a low probability. We're looking for high probability. Uh, I mean, high high probability, high reward, uh, with low risk. Over to Aussie dollar. All right, so if the Aussie, if the dollar is going up, this should go down. All right, in order for us to trade this dollar, this thing is done uh, 20 pips during the night. That's it. All right, we're going to have to break this uh, channel right here, and we're going to have to break this bottom. So by the time it gets down to here, it will have done 50 pips. All right, and the ATR of the Aussie dollar is 68 pips. There's only 18 pips left in the currency, right? And that's on the high side, as you can see here, because right now, Aussie's doing 68 pips, but in a 90-day average, it only does 62 pips, and in a 180-day, it only does 62. So it's actually doing greater than its normal average day, 
all right? So 18 pips, it could only do 12. 12 to 18 pips is all it could do, all right? So, and, you know, every once in a while, sure, they're going to blow out and go 100 pips. But that's, that you, that's not a statistical probability. That's a possibility, but it's not a statistical probability. We trade the statistical probability, all right? <clears throat> so do we have a trade on the Aussie dollar? We have a wide open space. We got a place to press our winners, but we don't have the ATR buy. See that? See how easy this becomes. Once you've got your start charts set up and structured, now you have a way to filter whether the trade is a trade for you or not. All right. Now, as you mature as a trader, there are traders who will say, I know that it's going to take three more days to get down here, but I don't want to miss this opportunity. So I'll go ahead and take my one third lots here with that stop being way up here. All right. I up here and I'll hold it and wait for the break to go. And when it goes, I'll add my second position, my third position to the downside. All right. Now they may be in that trade for two days waiting for that to happen. All right. So, uh, you have to, you have to have your psychology on top of your head at that point, because we've all been in trades where we've been upside down right? and we've been upside down for an, an unbelievable amount of time. And what happens to our brain when finally we've been upside down in this trade for, you know, a day and a half, and finally it pops down here and starts to move back. And you've got five pips right here. What's, what does your brain tell you to do? You've been upside down for five days and you now have a winner. What does your brain tell you to do? Click it out. Take it. Exactly right, Pete. Take it. Click it out. Click it out. And guess what? Uh, that's the wrong thing to do, all right? You either plan that you're going to do it all the way to the downside or you don't take the trade in the first place, all right? So everything tells you to click it out here. You click it out, pops up and screams to the downside and you miss the opportunity and you plan for this whole trade and you threw your, plane, your plan out the window, you see? So that's why, that's why it, 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 we talk, everybody talks about being a disciplined trader and everybody should read The Disciplined Trader by Mark Douglas. It's a book you need to have in your library, right? <clears throat> and The Disciplined Trader is easily read, it's easily understood, it's easily said, it's a lot harder to apply, right? So uh, the process of becoming a, a trader is becoming a disciplined trader, right? I uh, just bought it. Okay, so let me tell you how to, how to, how to deal with it, Pit, uh, Pete. You want to read it from cover to cover all at one time. Read, oh, not at one time, but, you know, in a day or two. Read it. It's not very big, all right? And you want to have a highlighter. And as you read that, uh, things are going to jump off the page at you. And you go, wow, that's me. Oh, that's me. That's me. And you highlight those things, okay? And then next month, you take the book down again, and you only read the highlighted parts. And what you're doing as you do this, you say, hey, I'm getting better at this thing. I'm getting better. And at the end of one year, you read it cover to cover again with a different color highlighter because you will have grown as a trader. And now the things that really jumped at you out at you before the first time you read it through will, be, will not be as important as the ones that now do as you become a better trader. So you do that one with a, with a different color highlighter and that next year you read your highlighted points. So you can read your highlighted points in probably 35, 40 minutes. Right? So uh, it's, it's how, that's the correct way to digest that book. So uh, hopefully that helps you, Pete. Now that you just bought it, that's the way to do it. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. So we don't have a trade on the Aussie dollar. Let's go to Euro Yen, okay? It was an alert from last night. It did go, uh, did do part one. It didn't do part two. <clears throat> so uh, it's down here right now. Uh, so now we have no dollar in here. We've got an 84 pip ATR, all right? And uh, what did the three musketeers tell us, okay? Three musketeers say, we might be trying to reverse. We're trying to reverse. We're trying to reverse. This is up high, trying to turn down, and this has already made the turn right there, okay? So the, the preponderance evidence says the Euro Yen is going to go to the downside. So how do we confirm that? We go over to MACD on the Euro Yen, and we look at MACD, and MACD says, that's correct. You are trying to sell. You can see the moving averages now into the open. All right, we're waiting for a zero line break to, to confirm a down move at this point in time. All right, so we're looking for a down move now. Yet all this time we've been looking for an up one, so we take the channel off, because if we have an up channel on there, we're biased to the upside. So we take that off. We put a single line trend line across this bottom right here. And if we break this bottom, we now have a potential opportunity, all right? Now, we can see that during the night, it went from here down to here, which is approximately 50 pips, all right? 
So there's 34 pips left in this currency, 34 pips, which means there's the target, all right? So here we have again, we have a wide open space. We have a place to press our winners. Do we have the ATR? No, we don't. We only have 30 pips. Do we have a trade on the Euro Yen? No, we don't. Wow. All right. So pass on that one. All right. And by the way, this is normal. People go, wow, you're not finding any trades. That's exactly correct. What traders believe is that there are trades all over the place. And the reality of the situation is there are only one or two real opportunities per session, only one or two, which is one of the reasons that we watch 19 currencies and not just the nine majors, because the, the majors, because they're so heavily controlled by the dollar, may not have a trade at all in the majors, but over on the crosses, we may have an opportunity. And that's why we watch 19 currencies. All right, pound yen. All right, so pound yen did move up during the night. Uh, it did react off this top, which we thought it was going to, okay? So this has now been done an ABC correction, A, B, C correction. Close and reverse there, close and reverse there. Two close and reverses as they exited the buys into the cells, all right? So during the night, they have gone, this is uh, one o'clock. So during the night, they have moved down 40 tips, all right? 40 pips, which means there's still 75 pips left in the pound yen to the downside, all right? Let's put, take this off right here. Let's put a single line trend line across these bottoms right here. Right there, one, two, three, four, right there. If we break this, there's a 75 pip opportunity. Can the currency do that? How do we check that? Three Musketeers says, we haven't even thought about making the turn yet. This says, yeah, we're trying to turn it. This says, well, maybe it's just starting. We got a doji over here. This is still high, but it is high enough so it could turn to the downside. This is made to turn and this is made to turn. So it's already telling you we're trying to make this turn. All right, so what would confirm that? What would confirm that would be MACD once again. We go to MACD, pop up the pound yen, and pound yen says, what do we have? We have divergence this is going down this is going up see that let me draw it better here let me do, actually do it with a line so you can see it instead of freehand drawing it all right so you see that's going down that's going up if you were here last monday we talked about divergence okay that is what divergence looks like candles going the opposite way of the macd the macd is is ahead of this curve <clears throat> the macd is the only uh, indicator that is not lagging in the market. So the MACD tells you, yes, you are going down. If I draw this, can everybody see that now? What do we got? A rising wedge. A rising wedge is a buy sign or a sell sign? What is it? It's a rising wedge, buy or sell? Sell, so, all right? So got a lot of information now that we've just gathered out this currency that tells us, by the way, if you're a seller, you got 75 pips left. Let me draw that rising wedge on here. Like that. You got 75 pips left in this trade. If you can break, hook, and go below here, break, hook, and go, there are 75 pips left in the ATR. All right. So here, there's, that's 50 pips. That's 80 pips right there. So the trade is down to the 50% FIB at 142.72. So should, should pound yen go on the board today. Should it? Yes, it should. Absolutely. All right. Now, Euro Aussie, again, nice thing is we don't have any, uh, any um, uh, a dollar in here. 116 pep ATR, and we have a potential right now of a Gartley. You go, how did you see that? Okay, well, I'm practicing it is what I'm doing. I'm working on learning how to tr recognize Gartleys, okay? So here's a Gartley. All right, it's a very specific pattern in the marketplace, okay? So this would be a bearish Gartley, X to A, we draw it with the right color here, X to A, X to A, A to B, A to B, B to C, remember, see, it doesn't go this low, B to C, and it went there, all the way to the bottom there. So it's not a Gartley, everybody see that? It's not a Gartley. If it had stalled right in here and bounced up, we would actually be looking for that sell, but it didn't do that, right? So we don't have a Gartley, right? So we can eliminate that out of the deal. They're not doing this anymore, right? But they're possibly still doing this, right? Uh, and they could be actually, there's a close and reverse, so they could be bouncing to the upside, right? So now we're looking for price action. 
How do we tell what price action is trying to do? That's where all this comes in play, which you can't get any other way except for proact traders. They're trying to take it down. They were trying to take it down and maybe trying to take it up now. They're trying to take it down. All right. This is showing a little, it's not much angle on it, so it might be a correction. They're trying to go down and they're trying to go down. Right. So the preponderance of evidence says they're trying to go down. All right. So now we go down to MACD and we say, okay, Mr. MACD, what do you say about Euro Aussie? And Mr. MACD says, by the way, you just had a zero line break to the downside. We're a seller. All right. So we are a seller. All right. So we can see now that our opportunity is down here. All right. During the night, they went from, where's three, uh, it's a, okay, here's the Asian market last night. So that's after the ATR started. <clears throat> hey, Batman. Yeah, Richmond's here. All right. So, and Richmond trades Bar Gartley's and bats all like, cra like crazy. All right. So what have they done? They went 30 pips, 60 pips, 90 pips. They've done 90 pips of 116 pip ATR. That means when they break down here, there's 20 pips left, all right? So I have a wide open space. I got a place to, to press my winners, at least three T30s in there. I can press my winners in there, all right? I need a break up and go below here. Do I have a trade this morning? That's right, Robin, that T3 really helps to see it was broken right there. See how that T3 was broken? Yeah, big help. So, no, I don't, see? See? Yeah, but man, it's a bright red candle. I'm in already. <clears throat> See, that's where you got a problem, right? GJ is starting to go. Let's go back here and maybe we'll get this trade. Let's see here. All right, we got on the 10. We only go to the 10 minute chart when we're ready to actually trade it, right? So uh, we got a break and a hook, but we still don't have a go yet. That's That candle's going up, as you can see. So it's not a go yet. All right, so since it broke, it take, it, that's 10 minutes, that's 20 minutes, that's 30 minutes. It's now 40 minutes since the breakout. 40 minutes since it broke out. Is there any hurry in the forex? None at all. all right. We're waiting for this to turn to the downside. Now, what would really be great on this is if it turned to a, a, a black outline candle, like one of these right here, see, like that or like that. If it turned to black outline, that means we would have lost this momentum that drove it to here. So what does that mean? Well, the next time we see money come in, it'll turn bright red again. Does everybody understand that? All right. There, it's momentum indicators behind the scenes, measuring how fast the money is coming in on that candle. The only charts that we know of in the world that will do this are these. All right? Maybe somebody else has figured it out, but we, we've been going since 2004 and never seen anybody do it yet. Uh, EA moved 55 pips of an 89 pip London open move, then bounced to the square up, another possible push down from the current 60 minute close in reverse. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, but how much is left, right? So, uh, could be, uh, Gus, it could, could be building a bear pole. Exactly right. Yeah, could be building a bear pole. All right, so here we go. All right, so we got to be below here. All right, so that'll, that's still 90 pips of there. When we do that, we have 26 pips left. All that's left in our trade is to there. Do we have a trade? No, but we'll have one tonight. There's the opportunity for tonight. All right. Now, when the ATR comes back, we get 116 pips, which is almost three, four T30s. One, two, three. Four. You see, that would be the target tonight based on the ATR. See that? So uh, I'm doing this on purpose. Everybody goes, why are you doing it? Because I'm trying to be very methodical, especially for people in here who are brand new, who are, who are looking for the excitement. Oh my gosh, I want to be in a room. I want to be in a room. I want to be in a room. I want to be trading. I want, oh, I, want to. I want you to understand right, that if you're in a room where that is happening, you are in the wrong place. Terrible to be in a place like that. Right? Because all it's doing is teaching you to react off your right brain, emotional side of your brain. Let me uh, kind of pull this up here for a minute and show you what I'm talking about. Right? So this is a very famous trading room. It costs you 300 bucks a, a, a month to be in this room here. I won't tell you who they are. And they posted this one day. 
We made 35 trades for 226 pips Tuesday. Yes, you read that right. Are they excited? Are they happy about what they did? You bet they are. All right. And you bet the traders in there were all excited. Oh my gosh, this is the most awesome thing I've ever been in. Oh, this is crazy. Okay. But let's analyze and see what they actually did. They made 35 trades. If they had nothing more than 30 pip stops, okay, I'm going to change the color of that. If they had 30 pip stops, they risked 1,050 pips to make 226 pips. Is that good trading? 35 trades in one session? Is that good trading? No. I risked 1,000 pips to make 226. Wow. They just have to be lucky. That's all. They were just lucky that day. That's it. <clears throat> totally irresponsible trading. But I'll bet it was exciting. I'll bet it was fun. But that's a place you're going to lose your money. It costs you 300 bucks to be in that room every month. Wow. All the way through those currencies, nice and slow, extremely methodical. What did we find? Pound yen. How many traders are in the pound yen? Anybody? Anybody in that pound yen? If you are, you're going, oh, what's going on? Oh, no. Oh, see. All right. So we got a live trade on the pound yen to the downside. We'll see what happens. It's, oh, it's going against me. Hey, expect that. That's what it's going to do. All right, so you now know that there's your opportunity to downside right here, right? What happened? They didn't have enough sellers, all right? They don't have enough sellers. Why do they go up? Find the sellers, okay? We don't have enough sellers to break this. Where are the sellers? Professional sellers sell at the top, all right? That's why they sold at the top over here. They sold here, and that's where the first move is. The next trade is down here, right there, all right? Uh, so if they don't find enough sellers here, they're going to do what? An ABC. A, B, C, see, which is why that's so critical that your first trade is one third of your lots with three times the stop. So you're, if you trade this trade here, it's three times the stop. In order to get your stop, they're going to have to go all the way up to this triple top to get it. And if they're trying to go down, they're not going to go up that far. See that? So always trade your first trade with one third of your lots. The second trade is where either two thirds comes in or one third and one third or whatever it happens to be, whatever the real estate of the day tells you. 